everyone, and welcome to Wednesday's Talking Reds in association with Tokyo Time. That's Rob Goodman. I'm Mo Stewart. I was away for a week, but I am now back and pleased all about it. You match fit again, Mo? Yeah, I am match fit again. Um, it was a bit of a weird situation. I basically had something that was sore. I just thought it was all right. Then I left it a little bit longer, and then I left it a little bit longer. And then I ended up having to go to hospital and go to surgery. So the moral of that story is, if something's hurting you, get it sorted. But anyway, enough about me. I'm back, you're right, fighting fit, raring to go. And I want to talk about another lad who's just got right up off of his sick bed and has got us all really excited. Uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, there's been that video from the time in Dubai showing yeah, him yeah. running through drills, looking sharp. And uh, there's been a new development over the course of the last 24 hours, in as much as James Pierce has reported that we may be seeing him available for selection by March, which is, considering we were expecting him to write off the whole season, is remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think the club are sort of unofficially briefing a few of the local patch journalists, because I think they're David Maddox and the t uh, Mirror mm -hmm. around the story, and both exactly the same line, which was um, he could be back in full training mid to late Feb, could be in contention for the first team in March. People, I think James speculated even the, the second leg against Bayern, didn't he? Yes, he did. I mean, you know, people thought Klopp was joking. He said this in a press conference about a month ago. He, goes, he said something like, he looks like he could play tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and lo and behold, I mean, the one fear I have is those long injuries always seem to come with some supplementary ones. Yeah. And Chamberlain is, people forget, Chamberlain's not a player without injury prone and an injury prone history so it's not a chicken worth counting and you look it's, a, it's I think it's a good psychological boost but you I think all the best will in the world apart from maybe a first game back where he plays with some mm. big rush of adrenaline I don't think we'll see the real Oxlade change no. in this season and I think that's a really important point to kind of put out there as much as it's exciting to be able to see him come back and be back on the pitch because how much we all felt for him through all he's been through we have to temper that with a little bit of reality. We can't expect him to be the same person. We can't get into a situation where we need him to save us. And we need uh, April um, Chambo from 2017 to come straight back in. It's not gonna be like that. You're right, he has had a long history of knee injuries. And anyone who's even had one increases the in chance of re-injury by 25% I believe it is so it's also also it's not as if there's like a lot of league cup games and FA cup games where you can give him 45 he's going to be playing behind closed doors matches mm -hmm. but first team wise I think he's going to be getting fives and tens here yeah. and there for a good month even assuming they're ready to pick him by mid-March so you're going to get mid-April I think by before even that's assuming no setbacks before yeah. anyone's even talking about a full start and by then you could be like, Jesus but that could be the game that matters for this or that and are you going to risk and it? I think this is the thing that I'm focusing on is that he can still make a difference in those five tens and even if he gets to the end of the season it's 15 to 25 mm. and he only really needs to make a difference in one of them just think about the reaction he would get from everybody else the reaction he would feel to being back because he did miss out on a lot not just for Liverpool but for England over yeah. the course of this injury yeah. and he has come back and the lads have kind of done what he wanted them to do, which is put him in a position to be able to come back in and affect a, a title winning team. So I think it's important to be able to see what he gives us in this period. It's still a bonus, whatever it is. I think it just gives you an, no, sorry, another option, it's too simplistic way of looking like another another chance of having some backup. So at the moment we've got a set, well I haven't got a set first 11, certainly our attacking mm -hmm. three is set. But that then get, let, makes sure you think you've got Keita, Chamberlain, Shakiri. Now they can all be in or out of form and fitness, but surely one of them hits top form at the right yeah. time, hits the right note at the right time. So it, it helps from that point of view. And look, we're still, we're still, as we were last season, living on a wing and a prayer that the front three don't get a niggle. I mean, you're looking at Tottenham's situation, you're thinking, shit, yes. yeah, but for the grace of God goes us. And very much that is the case. And with every injury at this period of the season it becomes even more and more important as you go down the stretch and as you remember last season we did start to suffer those particularly in central midfield so you can never really rest and say okay we've got what we want as a squad mm. but every little bit of positive action helps and I think when you're talking about the mentality of the squad the tough slog that it is week to week in a title race and it's something we have to keep reiterating not a lot of these lads have been through this situation before so to get the emotional boost of having him back 
sitting next to them in the dressing room, even if he's not necessarily getting out onto the pitch, having him there on away games, in the dressing room, around the guys, keeping everyone together. I think that, as a, as a mental kind of um, Philip, is going to be just as important as what he does on the pitch. Yeah, I think that's very true. I mean, but let's be honest, the games, although they're not coming thick and fast now, if we get past Bayern Munich, big if, but if we get past Bayern Munich, suddenly April is this mad period of yeah. intensity and then you do see the possibility of injuries and that's where, that's where I think you go, thank Christ, he's making an early comeback. Mm -hmm. Because he could have been in this, I suppose we, the, positive, the great positive is he could have been in this situation where with his positivity, keep you up -y videos <laughs> in late April and we'd have been, oh, that's fine, he might kick a ball. You know, if we get to the Champions League final, we're now saying he might kick a ball in the heart of the action. That well, could, that's I mean, if you think about what happened with Emre Chan last season, it was very similar, wasn't yeah. it? It's like we kept thinking, well, maybe we can have him for the last couple of league games. Maybe we can have him here. Maybe we can have him there. And in the end, he wasn't really able to be effective because you never know with those injuries. You can only hope. But like you say, in this situation, we're hoping that he's not having to come in and be our, our only hope to deliver or to save from this game. That said, mm. if there was anyone out there who I could choose to score the goal that wins the league championship, I think he'd be quite high on my list. And I don't give a fuck who does score that goal, <laughs> as long as he scores that goal. I'm going to put it on the record there. Do you know who you haven't heard about, if I can digress slightly, no, for, for be, Fabinho since the weekend? He goes off with a hamstring. Has, any, has there been anything on that? I've not heard any injury updates on that. I'm hoping that the time between that game and the game next Wednesday means that he's going to make it. I think if he, there was real fear of that, we might have heard about it by now. Yeah, I mean, the, the Deli Alley hamstring situation, we yeah. got a full briefing. Didn't exactly. We? And I mean, mm. there's going to be situations where the lads will be training and there will be pictures and people will be able to see if he's there and what he's doing. I don't like looking at those pictures. I get, I get major anxiety looking at training pictures. <laughs> Bobby's there, Moe's there, Sadio's there. Oh, it's Fabinho. <laughs> it's like, where's Wally? <laughs> yes. It's a good time, actually, that we're fretting over Fabinho. I think it's a testimony to how far he's come in the, in the few months since he was being written off. Definitely. And it's another one of those situations that we were all hoping for, and it appears to have been delivered that someone, once they settle in, we would all see what the manager was seeing and what some of the other people were saying, myself included. And now we are at that stage, and it's fantastic for Fabinho. So, yes, well done to Fab. Uh, it's probably a nice little juncture to kind of pause a little bit and think about where we've been this week and what we're up to. Tokyo Time are partnering us throughout this season, sponsoring Talking Reds, and we're delighted they are doing so. They are a premium headwear company based here in Liverpool, but representing throughout the world. Here's a really cool video that made the shows a little bit more about what they're about. They're supporting us this season, so make sure you support them. Perfect. John is always there. Now we've got a little bit more financial news on the show. Now yesterday they covered our healthy £100 million profit but there's been more talk of trying to increase that, uh, particularly via our kit deal which runs out I believe at the end of next season mm. and there's already been a lot of talk of trying to gain parity with Manchester United who are currently on a £75 million a year deal with Adidas. Um, there's been lots of talk that maybe the New Balance Warrior partnership isn't going to continue as it has done for so long. Um, if it was to end, is there anyone in particular you'd like to see us pair up with? Mo, I don't give a fuck about this. <laughs> I actually, I, I've just got no interest in sports brands. I, no, but I'm, I'm, no, but in all seriousness, I, what I do care about I think is much more important than people. I know there are people who are into it, oh, I hope it's Nike, I hope it's just whatever. I think it's much more interesting what the, what the value of the deal is for Liverpool. Yeah. 
Um, I would like to see us get to a point where, because every time these deals come, there's always inflation in. I've never seen them get be less than the previous deal. No, no. So if United Steel was valued at what, 75 million, it was valued at 75 million three years ago, two, two years ago, two something years. like that. I'd like to see us take a, a quantum leap above that. One, to reflect the fact that um, time has passed and these deals are more valuable, but secondly, to reflect where we are in the, in the scheme. Are you, of are you talking nine figures? Yeah, we're just adding up the figures. <laughs> yeah, I am talking nine figures. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're, Jesus Christ, our profile for a, for an ab, for a brand, brands, is that we're Champions League finalists, toe to toe for the league title. What more do you want? And with our worldwide fan base mm -hmm. and all. So yeah, I'd like to see us get a really rich deal that helps us buy fantastic new footballers for Liverpool. I think that's a, an important point as well because that kind of deal that blows everyone else out of the water is the kind of thing that Manchester United used to do really well when they were the top dogs. Yeah. And it would be another indicator that we are now being um, ensconced in that top table, at that top level, and that yeah. the rest of our peers are now looking to us, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch, as someone who is actually leading the dynamic. I think it's possible. I think from New Balance, there's a lot of um, noises to say that they probably aren't going to renew, because it would involve even getting parity with Arsenal and Chelsea's deal of 60 million would involve doubling what they had on the previous deal. Yeah. So to see them go such a large jump, I think is a little bit, um, I wouldn't be expecting it. There has been noises, uh, Mr. Andy Heaton himself seems to believe that Nike are the primes to take over since they don't really have a team in the Northwest market as yet. Obviously they are one of the biggest global brands out there. I mean, Sean's showing that himself behind the camera right now. So, I mean, I'm sporting some Nikes, so yeah, I'm just having dissed brands. <laughs> <laughs> I can say if I have one, there they are. But um, yeah, the other, cons the other sort of interesting thing you hear is uh, sort of mini conspiracy theories linking certain players and their own private mm -hmm. deals to these kind of associations. And you hear that well, Liverpool are with Nike and uh, Messi's with Nike. Who the hell's Messi with? Is he with Nike? He's Adidas. He's Adidas, we're not getting Messi. <laughs> uh, but you know what I mean. Neymar's Nike. Uh, Neymar's Nike. Is uh, Hudson Adoy Nike? You know what? I think he might be. Mm. I think he might be. And that was a rather nice segue there, Rob. Because I get the opportunity you. to say one of those things that I actually enjoy saying, believe it or not. Rob, you were right. We did a transfer show a couple of weeks ago in which you claimed that Liverpool should be looking at Chelsea's style at Callum Hudson Adoy. Oh, we did, didn't we? And now it turns out we have oh. been. And according to Build, who announced the story, they were looking at him, or we were contacting him, around the same time as you were actually saying that. So, I don't know who you know. Big Mikey Edwards, he, I think he tunes into the My Gutter show, which is very well our uh, subscription service, Indeed. tour player, five pounds a month. Um, yeah, so my, so my listeners, and you should too, and you might find out more about my uh, crystal ball gazing, my, the Hudson Adoy story uh, starts here. In reality though, I mean, part of the story that's emerged about the, the relationship with him and Bayern is that there's people now trying to say that he wouldn't get the minutes of Bayern the same way he's not getting the minutes of Chelsea. Um, I think that's a fair point for debate depending upon whether or not Ribéry and Robin do continue beyond the season. But would he get those minutes at Liverpool? They've, I think they've probably got a bigger bigger, what's the word, roster of attacking players, haven't they? I mean, with uh, some different positions, but there's Kingsley Coman and Lewandowski and mm -hmm. the other fella whose name is Kingsley. And Robert and Rivery, world-class names. Muller and well, Talisa and... All. Yeah, yeah, done well. Yeah. Um, I think, I think uh, the, uh, the Liverpool pitch, I think, is quite easy. It's, mm -hmm. We're playing a 4-2-3-1, but lads, that's four attacking players. We've got three who are world-class. And Jürgen Shakiri is a great guy, but we prefer it when he comes off the bench, quite frankly, um, and does bits. So there is a slot. So in there the is team. a slot. Yeah, right? I think so. And that's notwithstanding form, rotation, mm -hmm. injury, all those kind of things. So I think any any young or even peak level front three player should back themselves to get serious amount of games for Liverpool. I really like the idea of us coming into this race, not only because he's a young, exciting attacking player, the kind that I want us to be interested mm. in. But I like the idea of this maybe stopping by and getting out over the line before the end of January and him having to play against us in the Champions League. That's a delicious little detail there. 
Yeah, yeah, it could go the other way, of course. You I mean, could you could bang one in the top end uh, <laughs> for Bayern Munich, but, but yeah, yeah, well, either way. We'll, we'll watch the space. There will be more transfer talk coming up in another one of our transfer videos, and there's going to be more gutters coming. Mm -hmm. uh, as for today, things are being released. We've got a, a greatest show, which, which I believe is helmed by you. What's the subject for this one? It's the greatest show, and I'm the greatest show's host. I'm oh, sorry, it's a gag that ends. It always goes well for me. Um, I laugh at it. The greatest show is, is it's a look back at, at some aspects of Liverpool's past. Like in the, we've done uh, who's your greatest ever Liverpool striker, who's mm -hmm. the greatest Liverpool keeper, greatest Liverpool managerial season we did recently. The one that's being released this week is one I really enjoyed. We, we discussed what is one of the three greatest individual seasons for a Liverpool footballer. Okay. Um, so candidates were Mo Salah last season, Luis Suarez 2014. We went back to nine, as far as 1980, so okay. Dalglish 83, Barnes 88. There were about 12, 14 candidates who've had outstanding individual seasons, mm. and, uh, and we have to pick our top three. I like that. I'd, I'd you probably, liked it, yeah. I'd, I'd probably go for if I had to pick an outlier. Maybe a foul of 96. That was in the mix. Was it? He was in the mix. And I think, actually, he came in most people's top three, funnily enough. Because, yeah, he was... Uh, mm. Blonde Robbie, that guy, he had something. He really did have something. Blonde Robbie, yeah. But, yeah, that, that, I'll actually be listening to that once we get off Blonde here. Torres also came into... Oh, Kyle yeah. I, I, imagine, I imagine he would have made the discussion yeah. as well. Uh, the other show we've got coming out is Wild Cards, which, as you all know, is an Anfield rap favourite these days. And this week, it features Craig, uh, Amelia Bonner, Lizzie Doyle, I believe it also features Sam Evans and Spying Cop, so it's a nice little uh, cast of thousands in there to all give their opinion on Liverpool past, present and a little bit of random stuff. So those shows will be coming out over the course of today, keep your eyes out for that, keep your eyes out for new stuff video-wise, as I've mentioned, that we're going to be doing over the next mm -hmm. couple of days, and yeah, just have a nice relaxing time, there's a whole week before we've got some Liverpool football again, so, you know, chill out.